¿verdad? We are live. Oh, guys. we are live. I was, I was waiting for the little red thing to pop up. I, I was sorry. contemplating just letting you stare for a little longer. We are I, live. I, right and now. I, I would have stared for a little bit longer, but here's the situation. We, we used to use a whole different setup for the whole uh, written undead podcast. We have switched over now to the Zoom thing, and Zoom doesn't give me a freaking red beacon <laughs> to let me know that we're freaking live. Yeah. So oh, always blame on technology. Mm -hmm. I'm old. What do you expect? <laughs> Anywho, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Book Asylum. I am Jack Childress. I've got my tag oh. team, my cohorts, my problem makers, Richard Ryan Rose, Dungeon Dan Nubel, Angel Ramon, and oh my god. <laughs> is a throwback way back totally flipping things up on their ears ladies and gentlemen i bring to you the original woman the queen of what was once known as the written undead podcast which is now the book asylum i give you the one the only patty fry Rachio, <laughs> thanks for letting Joining. me come back. <laughs> <laughs> this week, not only do you get that, because I give you so much every week, every week, every week, I give you so much. But this week, <laughs> I give you not one, but two fantastic guests. I give you Kristen Vincent, author of. My eyes just went, okay, sunglasses inside, in not thoughts. good within her <laughs> thoughts. Thank you, because I could not see. I literally could not see what I wrote on the page, but it looks good, don't it? Looks good. <laughs> Sexy as always. And there, <laughs> yeah, I'm just <laughs> totally obliterating this thing. And Derek Barton, who has the Elude series and is also the co-founder of the with malice magazine that is just now dropping so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls here we go let's see how we can totally fuck this show up <laughs> i'm 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 gonna have to go ladies first that's just where i roll not, so kristen tell, tell us real quick with love what made you start writing I uh, well, I started writing when I was 12 years old. Um, it started out as just really to get over life, get over what that was weird. Yeah, now we're recording. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. My bad. We're good. How rude. Told you it was gonna go off the rails. <laughs> Richard just blew group. up the train. <laughs> like, please continue Kristen I started when I was 12 um, it was really just to get my emotions out uh, I was going through a lot of depression a lot of suicidal thoughts um, I was a cutter for many many years and so really um, writing helped me from not cutting uh, and and you know help me sort out my emotions and my feelings and everything so okay now i, I want to actually jump in here because uh i wasn't a cutter i was an eraser i don't know if you're familiar with that type of uh self-torture but it's like where you take a pencil eraser and you just keep rubbing it and rubbing it and rubbing it and rubbing it till you get the big blister to come up on your skin and all that yeah did you ever do that no, um, it was strictly cutting, and uh, I did the hanging game to where I would pass. Yeah. Holy, Holy shit. Yeah, Damn that's, scary. that's scary to me. Yeah, that is scary. <laughs> I'm yeah. so glad you're all right. <laughs> you're yeah. damn right. I, I, I thought pill popping was scary. Well, let me jump in on this, because, I mean, Chris, I mean, it, it, you know, 
I appreciate your openness on this and everything. And it, you know, when talking about uh, any kind of mental issues, you're in good company here. And uh, so, I, yeah, my question for you is because I, I did I did the same thing. It was uh, ther writing was therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was dealing with PTSD and lost some mm -hmm. people very close to me at the time, and uh, so that, that's kind of what led me to writing. And uh, so, and it did it did help. It helped uh, a great deal. So let me ask you: this, How did did writing help you? And if so, how how so and how much? Um, I believe it did because I'm not the kind of person that's going to sit there and talk to you about my problems. Uh, I hold mm -hmm. everything in, I bottle it up, and then I explode. Um, writing has helped me really just sort out how I feel. Um, I can sit down and write 10 pages of how I'm feeling. Uh, or if I'm triggered by something, you know, I'll write about it. Um, it. It really just helps me to really just sort everything out. And when I write, it's like... Everything that I feel is just drained through my fingers onto paper. And I just feel relieved. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, especially someone who's, you know, gone through the same therapeutic yeah. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. Well, I mean, one of the things that I've, I've you know, experienced myself and uh, Angel has as well is, you yes. know, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, P the PTSD. Yeah, having to go through something that just totally rocks your world, just shakes mm -hmm. you off your foundation and mm -hmm. messes you up, and then suddenly you're expected to still be the person you were, right? And yet you've been right. through this, and it's like they didn't go through it; they don't know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. It's some messed up stuff. So, did, has any of that kind of stuff affected the way you write? Have you written anything based on something you went through? Absolutely. Um, a lot of my writings are based off of my childhood. Um, as an adult, like being able to look back, you know, I, I can see through a parent's eyes that, you know, I know that my parents did everything that they could possible. Um, and we've even talked about stuff and I was made aware of some things that shed some light. Um, but yeah, um, my childhood and just my relationship with my my birth father, um, mm. things that I've gone through with relationships, um, absolutely. Mm. Mm -hmm. So now, okay, I'll take you a step further. Um, you've said that you actually have based characters on people you know in real life. Did you mm -hmm. do any of that out of spite? No. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, you know, sure. Um, I think that would be <laughs> yeah. inevitable, right? I mean, you know. You I, think, I think, I think we've all killed off a few bosses. <laughs> yep. I, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie because, uh, you know, it's Mother's Day will be a year. Uh, my biological father, my donor, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, <laughs> He blew up on me a year ago because of books and material content of books um, that I read and me being an avid reader and I review books as well. Um, you know, I, sh I share what I read. I mean, if you don't like it, you know, by all means, there is an unfriend button. Click it. <laughs> Bingo. Um, mm -hmm. But he, uh, he, he blew up on me and you know, was saying how I needed new friends and I needed new books. And he, he just like went off on me. And, you know, I'm thinking, I'm like, at the time I was 32 years old. I'm like, I am a grown woman. I'm like, you have no reason or no reason to tell me what I can and cannot read. Um, I'm married. Mm -hmm. And the way I see it is my husband is very well aware of the content that I read pretty sure he sleeps with one eye open <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, you know if the way I see it if I was changing 
because of what I was reading, he would talk to me and say, hey, you know, I think it's probably time you take a break. And then once you're doing better, you can pick it back up, you know? Um, so yeah, I think that I was pissed. Okay. Pissed. Um, I was upset and then it just turned into like pissed and I was raging. And so, yeah, I, I definitely wrote some stuff out of spite and, you know, yeah. Well, fuck. Yeah. That just actually oh, makes me happy yeah, to be no. quite honest <laughs> with you. All right. It, who else? We got a question. Come on, throw some out there. I, I just, I want to know, um, since, since you write and it's cathartic and, you know, due to other, everything in your life, putting it out there for others, how, how did that make you feel? Was it something that you had to think about for a while to do, or was it just something that was a no brainer? How, how did that, how did that come about? Oh, wow. I never planned on putting any of this stuff out, like at all. Um, right. Because this is like, my writing really like somebody keeping a journal. This is my mm -hmm. way of getting my personal thoughts, my feelings out, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I never imagined for the world to see any, any of this. Um, but, you know, after talking to several of my friends and, you know, encouragement uh, and with the indie community as well, uh, several indie authors such as Kelvin and uh, Bobby Murphy and several other amazing people, uh, you know, they, they've read some of my stuff and they were pushing me. They're like, you know, you really need to, to do something with this. This is great. And mm -hmm. um, even people here locally, um, you know, and, you know, I was like, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe me putting my trauma out there can help someone out there be able to relate and be able to understand that they're not alone. Um, and I guess wow. that's where I'm at now with my writing mm -hmm. and where I'm wanting to move forward with, with everything is just, you know, be as authentic as I can be with my writing um and hopefully i can help somebody else out there good okay now, now, now i want to ask you uh what, what's your favorite genre what's your favorite kind of uh, genre to read for pleasure hmm definitely a splatter mm -hmm. pump any oh no, really what really uh, Oh, yeah. we, 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 we got some recommendations for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hell, yeah, we do. Hell, yeah, we do. Oh. I saw that on. Yeah, you posted that before. No. Right. Fester by Meryl David. It's hanging on the wall. It's right I, over there. I'm in that book, by the way. I'm in that book. <laughs> Spy, <laughs> spider eats my nuts. Just so you know. <laughs> Chop, Chop, Chop the I don't That's think awesome. I'd admit to that, Jack. It, when it happens i can't deny it it happens right. hey jack chapter 10 that's all i'm going to tell you chapter 10 that's okay. where the yeah. horror is no, but, yeah. so kelvin allison love him to death like love him He's such a great dude genuine and um mm -hmm. he actually put me it's on the shelf um <laughs> He asked me and he put me in his book called uh, Reptile Dysfunction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Meryl David? Uh, oh my God, no, I'm sorry. No, I, no, need, I need person. to know, what did he have you do in that? I have to know. A uh, Reptile Dysfunction. Oh my God. What, what <laughs> was that? Who wrote that? What so was it, your part in this? Listen. Who wrote it? And okay. let me just say, it's called The Night of the Jizz Lizards, okay? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I don't get I'm it. I'm already really starting thoughts about that. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I'm already, that's just like, <laughs> yes, that's a it, winner. It, you would definitely understand the cover. <laughs> it's <sighs> incredible. It's hilarious. It's It's got this kind of like a... Friday the 13th, 80s uh, feel to it. Um, I don't die. 
Ah, look at <laughs> you. Ah, there you go. That's a good thing. I oh, I almost died. I was I was very worried. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it it's well, it's a book. But yeah, uh, definitely splatterpunk. Um, even though I've gone through a lot of stuff, uh, and I, it, it's weird because like I can't watch certain movies because of triggers, but for some reason, reading it is like, yeah. I don't know. Hey, it's cathartic. Old, is it cathartic? Would that be the word we're looking for? So I can use a fancy word, Maybe. cathartic. But Stealing my word, Jack. Thanks. I I cannot get enough of them. Um. Yeah. Any get get uh get the, faster get faster. Uh, yeah, I I think reading it to me is is better sometimes than watching it. Although I do like to watch um uh horror like that, but um I think it gives you a little bit more control maybe. Yes, because when you're done yeah, with it, you yeah. can stop at any time and come right. back to it, whatever. But yeah, I think right it because reading it, you could imagine you could you could put you could picture it in your own head as a, mm-hmm. as a movie. But your own your own version of it. That's the way I see it. That's why I'm like reading over watching movies. I, yeah. I prefer reading. But man, if you get a top notch narrator, we're talking a Matthew Crow, a Shellman, uh, just just a fucking Vernon. just a Vernon, just raw. You know, you get one of them. I'm sorry. It's like let me read it while I listen to their dulcet tones. <laughs> oh hey whatever works right yeah all right well um we still got five minutes left still on this first half hour because uh i'm trying to split this thing up between the pair so have you thought about writing in other genres like maybe doing a zombie book or some weird shit like that so I have, uh, I actually um, have a children's book I'm working on as well. It's more of a self-help book. Um, mm, that's going to okay. be on. Uh, I'm going to ask about that. But. Yeah, it's going to be based on, uh, you know, what what children go through, you know, like with bullying, with being of mixed race, um, uh, oh, being in, you know, having divorced parents or being of a different <laughs> race um coming yeah. from you know just just everything i'm trying to you know get it mm-hmm. in from all different corners um and i yeah and now, I how, do how short. hard how hard has that been though to try to you know see things from so many different angles the funny story so my mom is cajun french and my birth father is turkish uh, my grandmother is uh, married to my grandfather, who is Mexican. Um, mm-hmm. And I have a lot of friends that come from different uh, nationalities and, you know, just everything. Yeah. I've got mm-hmm. a lot of friends that do have uh, biracial children. And, you know, I hear a lot. Um, so. Yeah, then, being in the South, I do too. Uh... Yeah. And there's, there's two. Uh, I will you know, just in general, understanding a little bit based off of what I have seen growing up in school um, with how certain kids are treated, um, especially with like disabilities, because my son, he has Tourette's. He's also got a sensory disorder and he's severely OCD. Um, Granted, I mean, looking at him, you can't tell, but, um, you know, that's just really where I'm at. I'm trying to hit different piece to reach out to to everybody where it can reach to different children and you know it seems awesome. like today they're facing a lot of different challenges that when we were growing up yeah we didn't have either yeah you know, and a lot the, different darker world than than yeah. it was back in the 80s and 70s when i was growing up and i actually uh i just got done writing one uh that was based off of this school shooting, you know, based off of, you know, with what recently just happened. So mm-hmm. uh, growing up, you know, I don't think any of us ever had to really worry about that, you know, but now, you know, it's crazy. And yeah. I, yeah. Nuts. yeah. Just nuts. Yeah. Well, guys, 
we're going to make a quick shift all of a sudden. We're going to slide to the side. Going to go over and look over at another man. <laughs> Old man. Sweet man. Pretty man. Sexy man. The one and only Derek Barton. <laughs> he's got all kinds of stuff out there that he's wrote. And he's also working on getting a magazine out there for everybody to see. It is with malice. Because if you want to get something in it, you better make damn sure that it's with <laughs> malice. So, Derek, my dude, what is up? Thanks for having me back on. I appreciate it. So, um, like I said, a lot we've been, uh, I've been working with about 13 other writers. We're uh, basically putting together a short story ma magazine based on uh, horror and on crime fiction so uh, our first issue is about to be released and then uh we're open to one issue a quarter this whole year so hell to the yeah when i here's my thing um how many spots do you still have left do you have any more submission spots left like maybe i don't know uh kristen wanted to submit a short story or something is there room um i do have probably room for a couple more writers yeah and uh it's one of those situations where you know i've had a couple of people drop out i've had people jump in so it, it's you know i'm flexible and uh it's certainly like i said we're trying to do it at least this year i don't know if i'll continue it next year but so we'll have at least four issues for the year so yeah there is still some room so Okay, well now, well, now you prepared for the hammer that me and uh, Angel are about to drop when we Hell drop yeah. our stories on this thing, because we're coming I'm in. Looking hard. forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So, um, you know, I, like I said, we've had some uh, different uh, situations happen already. I wasn't prepared. Um, we had a really tragic story as far as one of our writers was killed. Uh, That's last month. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So I, I mean, you know, you know, we we put in a tribute to him in this issue, and uh, you know, our hearts go out to his family, and I really hope that you know we we honor his work. So uh, rest in peace, Steve King. So. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Babe. Is the fuck? Now, where do we pick up this thing? Stephen magazine? King. Or Steve, different Steve King. Steve King. Okay. Steve King. Okay. Like, oh, oh, sorry. King. No, it's okay. <laughs> Not Stephen King. <laughs> yeah, no. No, he's still alive for some damn reason. Fuck, I won't seem to die. <laughs> the hell. It's like 117, but he's still kicking. Uh, yep. Actually, I think he just turned 74. His birthday is like a few days after mine, in fact. Oh, he's there you go. All right, I got a question. I want to bounce back and forth between the two of you. Um, all right. Favorite horror movie of all time? Oof. Kristen, go first. You go second, Mr. Derek. Favorite horror movie? Mm. Mm. So hard. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, there's so many good ones, but. Dang. Which one just makes you go, I can watch that? If you're flipping channels and there's nothing on and then you <laughs> flip onto it, like USA and it's on, there, you're like, yep, I'm watching it. There's the original Friday the 13th. There's yes. the, there's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, the blob. Oh, God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I dare. Really. Well, you know, I, like I said, I grew up in the 80s. So, you know, of course, uh, a lot of my influence and uh, writing inspiration came through Stephen King. So I would have to say either The Shining or uh, Pet Cemetery are probably my top hmm. favorites. Yeah. Um, but there are a ton of great horror films out there. Um, what about Phantasm? How, well, where's Phantasm and all this? 
Honestly, I've never watched that one. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Jack, you're giving me a hard time about watching horror films. The other day we went over this. You said you haven't I know. watched one since like the 80s. So give me I a know. break. Come on, man. But Please still. Some man, current. Man, come on, man. <laughs> oh. He just threw well, you out, out Jack. <laughs> I got to I gotta catch up. I ain't going to lie. I got to catch up. Damn it. So three to y'all. Um, Pet Cemetery, first edition. Yes. Oh, nice. oh nice. nice. Look at that. Fantastic. Hot. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. It's shiny, too. It's official. Oh, well, yeah. It's nice. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. See, when, when we have people on this show, ladies and gentlemen, we go big time. We don't play around. <laughs> That's right. Never have. All the time. So now, all right, here's going to be my next question then. Um, Patty, mm-hmm. what is the one thing, the only thing that you're just like, nope, on? <laughs> and then after you answer it, everybody else has to answer it. So y'all been pre-warned. Oh, what do Anything you mean by no? Nope? Which is just a total Like no. you just like, nope, nope. I nope, don't even I have to think about I, it. Like, nope, I ain't doing it. I ain't touching it. I ain't smelling it. I ain't eating it. I ain't <laughs> swimming in it. I ain't whatever it may be. But no. Nope. Um, the first thing that comes to mind for that is a, uh, I am not jumping out of a plane voluntarily. Nah, That's, yep, a yep. Nope. That's a nope. <laughs> All right. Let's go, Derek. Okay, so I, I was taking your question as far as what I would not watch again, kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> nope. Well, hey, nope is a nope. That's all I know is a nope is a nope. Um, there's a movie that I mean, there, there's very I could probably count on my hands movies that, that would I would consider scary or that really hit hit at the core. Um, there's a movie called Megan is Missing. I will never go through that torture again. <laughs> uh, it's a great film. It's very brutal, is what I have to say. It's about a pair of girls that get kidnapped. And, uh, you know, now that I'm a father of a seven-year-old myself, I cannot, I cannot watch that one. So, so, so wait, 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 wait. I'm going I'm to pause this for a minute. So it's, it's worse than Teresa's or Saul or, like, that's Let's pretty hardcore. Uh, the ending really gets you. Um, Ooh, I so, need to see it. Yeah, it's one of those where, like I said, it's a one once in a lifetime experience. That's all I'll ever do again. I'll never watch <laughs> it again just because it, it was too too brutal, too close to reality. And, oh, okay, and ladies and gentlemen, keep this in I mind. I don't want to blow you, the ending or anything. As you're as you're hearing him say this, this man is the co-founder. <laughs> of with malice magazine and yeah. he's telling you that even i went uh-uh Some, <laughs> no sometimes I'm they were just too close like he said sometimes they hit too close to home yeah like it this is not a horror movie at all the way back when a couple years well more than a couple years but that movie life is beautiful about the holocaust yep. i went through a whole oh, yeah. box of tissues watching that movie i will never watch that movie again yeah, oh, I, was, I was, am obsessed was, with to watch. Like, everything and, dealing with the Holocaust. I've got books and books on it. And oh, I've, I've, I've read a yeah, I've read a bunch oh, of man. stories, but watching that movie in the ending, I was See, like, that's it. Yeah. I'm done. I Jack can't watch told that me, ever again. Jack told me he went through a whole point. box of tissue with uh, the Titanic. <laughs> actually, 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 no, uh, the correct answer to that would be um the robin williams movie um, oh oh i know what you're talking about yeah shit my brain just locked up like, where he, no, like where he goes through looking for his wife yeah uh, what, yeah. what she, dreams may he, come what dreams may come thank you very much that's the mm-hmm. one that i can't watch without crying i can't do it i just it's physically impossible i will cry at the end of that movie every single time he's got some without really foot. good films robin williams is Way underrated, mm-hmm. way underrated as an actor. Green, <clears throat> yeah. Hey, and where the hell did Richard go? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he he scared him off to go eat dinner. 
Yeah, Ran off and Rich just said he had to step off for a few minutes. Oh, okay. So we lost him after minutes. So again, this is what I said. It's like friends at the bar sitting around the table talking about shit. Some friend gets up, walks away, whatever. <laughs> keep talking. <laughs> so now, Angel, let me ask you this. What's up? If if you had a chance to go write vampire romance, <laughs> what would you do with it? Do it. Wow. Vampire romance? That's a tough oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Only be, only because I never I would never had, I would never think of writing it. That's the only reason. Well, I know that's why I'm throwing it in your ass now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh the that's a tough one, man. I gotta honestly well, I would pro. try to I would try to aim more for maybe the romance portion of it. <laughs> because I'm just not a vampire person, but yeah, I mean you, you well, kind of like- stumped me on this one. Why they ain't the sequel? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Don't even say that, Derek. I know. I mean, dinosaur romance. Just promise me that you won't <laughs> shimmer. That's all I care about. Vampires that <laughs> shimmer, just that makes my skin crawl. I mean, that's a tough one. That's a tough question, Jack. That was a no blow right that you, had, you just asked. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Krista, let me ask you then. Um, have you thought of. Um, when you're looking at doing something outside of your comfort zone, how, how do you approach something like that? How do you even begin to say, because I've wanted to write some stuff that I really don't know anything about, but I, I like the, the concept. And so I want to go write it, but. Research. Uh, it. Definitely so, research it. So where do you start? Google. I Google. start with Dr. Google. Shut Dr. up, Google. You're, yep. you're, you're not named Kristen, you assholes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Google. Um, that's that's my best friend. Um, and then if it's like medical type stuff, you know, I've got friends that are in the medical field, and you know, I'll typically ask them questions. Um, so yeah. Do you ever worry about the feds watching you? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, all the time. <laughs> I think we all do. Uh, yeah, you sons of bitches, me included, look at some of the weirdest crap. It's like, how does a leg break? Ah, oh, it goes this way, then snaps, and then it's like, what the fuck? What are we looking at? Don't Why are we doing this? Or, I mean, or, uh, that, that, that's Angel, totally. Or I'm actually working on um, something that's I'm been waiting. in my brain since like for a really long time. Okay, y'all. And don't judge me, but <laughs> okay. think about if you could have a book and have these characters in a room that they can't get out, kind of like Saul. Okay. okay. With, I'm with good. Those where they cannot see out, but you can see in and then just gas them and you can watch it. Whoa. can i help can i help you write that because i like i like hurting people let's do it <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> hell yeah we're about to write Come on, jack book. put your eraser away <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't be don't kill me like that man see I, i'm bitching because uh the book that or the short story that i'm writing for Derek is taking me longer than it should because i'm mired in the boring stuff which is the build-up the get to know the characters. Yeehaw, here's our people. We love them. Yeehaw. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And I'm ready to go kill a motherfucker. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm building have you, up. Have you, tried, uh, have you tried doing uh, like a, a bullet outline or a beats outline? That'll no, help I'm, you kind of know I, where you're going with it. Oh, no, trust yeah. me. I already got the deaths in my head. I just got to get to them. That's the problem. I mean, It'll help you get from A to B to C to D. You know what I mean? Even though you have D in mind already, you need B and C to figure out. Yeah, that B and C is. Problem. Yeah, B so and C irritates bullet, me. Yeah, I do bullet outlines, so I know exactly where I'm going. You know, and I have shorter way. I have to find a shorter route from point to point, and it makes it easier to get the entire book done that way. I, yeah, I really should probably do that because I basically I fly by the seat of my pants, yeah. <laughs> and that's pretty much all right. Yeah, they call those pants. I'm I'm plotter. I'm a pantser. I can't, I'm a pantser. I can't do that. I think huh? I need to pick Derek's Derek's brain. 
I need to hey, help anybody. Go. Sorry about that. Oh no, oh, I'm he's back. I, see, this this is why I wanted to have both of you on here at the same damn time because you're both fucking established writers. You're both badasses, and you're both really fucking smart, which I really like. Mm-hmm. And you both are so driven. So I want to ask both of you. I'm going to start, ladies first, with Kristen, and then go oh, directly to you, Derek. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you give to, say, a, a kid that was just realizing, man, I kind of like this writing thing, but they're not really good at it. You know, I mean, it's a kid, right? But what advice would you give to inspire them? to make them want to keep doing it because we need more writers we need more writers absolutely yeah so funny story my seventh grade teacher who was creative writing uh is what she taught uh was my influence um my advice i mean if you have an idea go for it you can always revise later but just just go for it. Whatever you have in your mind, write it. I, Derek, Derek. I, mean, I, I agree with that because of the fact that in my opinion right now, it is the easiest and the best time in history to be a writer. You have all the references, all the resources you can ever want in the internet. Mm-hmm. Any kind of problem you've had, somebody's written an article on it. Somebody's come up with a way to do it. I mean, you know, there yep. are all sorts of great writers out there that have books out there. You know, Stephen King's got his on writing. So, th- and there's all sorts of online editors and all sorts of um, websites and blogs. So right now it's the easiest time to be a writer. However, you've got to make that effort. You've got to set your goal and just mm-hmm. know, you know what, write for you at first. Don't write for an audience in your head because that's yeah. not you every time. Right for what you like, what you think you'll be entertained by. And I guarantee if you you write it, then you can take time to kind of look it over and then, you know, tweak it, you know. And yeah, like, yeah. Or, or completely rewrite it. Which is what not I've necessarily, been doing. <laughs> not necessarily. But I would definitely say that um, set aside the time and set a goal for yourself, but don't overdo okay. it as far as like, you know, don't set I'm going to write 3,000 words a day. You know, every word you write is um, a word closer to your goal, no matter if it's one word or 20, you know? So that's what I would advise new writers. And uh, that's, you know, kind of what helped me is, uh, you know, I wanted to write and I knew that there are plenty of people out there that do write and know how to do it. And they have put things out there that can show me the way. So even if you don't have a mentor, there are thousands of mentors out there online. Well, I didn't mean for the show to go. I didn't mean for the show to go in this direction. But uh, speaking of mentors, uh, Richard Ryan Rose is one of mine. And I'm going to ask you right now. I'm totally totally done. I have no shot. But I want to ask you, man. what got you so inspired to write a fucking book and now a series? Is that you, Derek? Oh, no, I no, no, was, uh, that, no, no. I'm sorry, you asking a question? Yeah, I was asking you a question, asshole. Oh, me? Yeah. I, was I, I, yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I am totally stoned on Benadryl right now. The allergies down here have been <laughs> kicking my butt, so I apologize if I'm a little loopy. Hey, we'll run with it because hell, I'm stoned on uh, well, other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I will be soon. It's my first day of retirement, so I can do it legally now. Damn right. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, congrats, man. Now I'm yeah. jealous. Thank you. Thank you. So what was your question, Jack, on that, right? All right my question is, uh, what made you decide you wanted to write a damn book? To me? To be like, yeah, to be like one of the other, other weirdos, like that one, Derek, <laughs> like mm-hmm. that one, me, like that one, Angel, like that one, Dan, who's trying to write one. 
Oh, and he'll come in, coming back to Miss Kristen down here. <laughs> you're huh? you're trying to be a freaking writer. Why why are you doing that? I'm getting food for my pup. I said, son. <laughs> I'm over stuttering now, y'all. See, this is why I love my show or our show. It's because it's live and we don't care. It's not, Do it. but you never know what will happen. Exactly. <laughs> it's just fun. So, Richard, uh, Miss Mr. Benadryl, why <laughs> do you like writing so much? You know, I, I love the just being able to create your own world and, and create your own characters, develop them any way you want, and uh, and uh, you just, you know, write your own story. I mean, my story is more than just... Uh, you know, some made up bullshit that I come up with. It's it, it's part of my story, and a lot of the stuff that I write actually happened to me. And it's um, and just like Christian, I needed I needed a way to vent. I needed some kind of uh, therapeutic release, and writing was very very uh, very beneficial in that arena. I, I had some issues to deal with, and I put it on paper, and you know, it didn't make everything go away, but it sure did make it feel better. Feel better and more. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I tell you this much right now. I I've known Rich for a hot minute now, and I'm gonna tell you guys something. That is one of the best people you'll ever meet on the entire planet. Right there, <laughs> just hands down, one of the greatest people ever. Yeah, but, that's not true. But thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm an asshole. <laughs> well, that's 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 the selling point is that he is an asshole. We all are assholes but in our own way. Asshole. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And he and he stinks. All right. Hi. So, yeah, look who I'm married to. That's why I'm an asshole. <laughs> one from one hey. Patricia to another. We rock. <laughs> yeah, we all rock. All right, so now I'm going to take it another level because I still don't see him on screen yet. Patty, what was it that made Javin decide to write a book? Um, well, he's told this story a bunch, uh, but uh, in a nutshell, <laughs> he he his disease progressed. So he's got Friedrich ataxia. Um, and it's a genetic uh, disease, uh, and it it's a neuromuscular disease, and it's kind of a, a weird branch of muscular dystrophy. Um, it's not really well known. Not a lot of people in the United States have it. So basically, um, he watched a lot of movies, um, and, uh, and he enjoyed that, but he gradually lost his sight where he's legally, he got, he was legally blind and his hearing started to go. So, and, and that's part of some of the, the progression of uh, that disease. So instead of kind of just muddling around and doing not, not anything, he, he kind of started listening to audiobooks since he really didn't watch movies anymore. And he got really got into um, uh, post-apocalyptic, you know, all that kind of stuff genre. Um, and he used to listen to Star Trek and Star Wars uh, books too, but um, he, when that didn't kind of work for him anymore, he kind of went into a, a depression a little bit. And his dad actually said, "You know, you've listened to these books for quite some time, and you really l enjoy them. Why don't you just write your own?" And so he kind of thought about that and was like, "You know what? Yeah, let me try it. I mean, what else am I doing, right?" So mm -hmm. he, they found naturally dragon speak, uh, naturally, a dragon naturally speaking, I think. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, yeah, it was we just call it dragon. I, yeah, yeah, we yeah, just dragon. call it dragon. Exactly. And it's dragon text to speech bite. or speech to text. And they have it set up on his computer. Yeah, I call, I call it dragon started writing. Um, And he actually wrote um, Free State of Dodge uh, before Zombie Lake, the Zombie Lake series. Um, and that was kind of... Um, it was, it was, the premise of that one is what if um, terror, terrorism happens on U.S. soil and how it affects um, kind of 
small town life, right? And it's a it's a town in Alabama that you know uh, he knew about that he kind of wrote uh, these characters around. And, and then the he, blood of, the blood of tyrants thing is. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that one. Um, he was working on, he's working on a second one. He's also got another book that he's working on. But then he, he really liked the zombie genre, and he was really into Mark Tufo's books. He loved them, and yeah. so his dad actually said, "Why don't you try one of those?" And he did, and that's where Zombie Lake came from. So, that's what kind of got him into it. Long, long story long. <laughs> oh well, let's see. Uh, your zombies turn blue. Yeah, he's got a very weird imagination. They, they, <laughs> yeah. they look they look like Smurfs running around biting Looping people while pooping. With so, big boners. With big boners. Yeah, big, big <laughs> boners. Exactly. Yeah, I forgot about that. that, that yeah, yeah. yeah, forgot about the boner part. And he yeah. likes to shoot people through the heads of their penises too, by the way. Yes, he loves that. That's, yeah, this will make what sure book, we got clear on that. was all testicles getting split open and things dropping out yeah it was yeah was like, it was, you gotta, it, you was tone that down. it was bad it was bad <laughs> i can imagine not even having to read that yeah very bad <laughs> well i've had to read from like book seven and now it's 10 um and i usually have to read them several times and then oh. I ha- then i am the one that usually has to read them along with salzman as he as he narrates to make sure everything's co- see that's the cool thing i get to do with richard when uh the wild eyed southern boy stuff comes out. I get to listen to them as they come. Salzman so did cool. Salzman mm-hmm. did the narration for my uh elude series, by the way. On oh, he did. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I really yeah. I, I really like Sean. He's a he's a really nice he's a guy. Great, great, yeah. he's a great voice, guy. great, great performer. Oh yeah. I love I love how he does Mo. I love how he does Mo in, in um Javin's book. I, I swear to God, every time I try to do something right here, these <laughs> some bitches fucking want to hold me from <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> My fucker. I swear to God, I don't know what the hell I'm dealing with around here. Yeah. Smokes, so, yeah. what the fuck? Look here, motherfucker. <laughs> I tell you what, Mo. I love every day time smokes. we're doing something. Man, smokes is the bomb. I love when he goes, white hey. bread. If <laughs> that son of a bitch kills smokes at the end of it, I swear I will come to Alabama and I will stomp a mud hole in his ass. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> no, you gotta come here anyway, so. Well, that's true, and yeah, I might stomp that. a mud hole in his ass anyway, just because yeah. the right. just because I'm there, just because I'm there. Why not? <laughs> anyway, why not? <laughs> All right, okay. so I'm going to jump back to Kristen now. Have you ever thought of writing some just off the rails, hilarious, goofy story like what we just been talking about? Absolutely. Um, so when was that? I think it was last year. Uh, went to Cookie Crumble or Crumble Cookie or whatever it was. Crumble. And Those are my and obsession so now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, uh, old friend of, I, of mine and I were in there and there was a customer that was complaining about their order. And again, I don't remember what was going on, but basically they were refilling the order. And um on our way back, we were cracking up about it and we're like, man, I could totally write like a short story about this and have us running to the car with like this homeless guy with like these god awful teeth and <laughs> hanging out and gum disease and just like. Oh. <laughs> um what did we say it was like an amputated leg with a cone <laughs> on it and just like Oy. yeah we we i thought about doing something funny with with that but it never came came about hey, damn it right that because i'm curious now because i've just seen the guy with the damn cone on his foot like <laughs> <a> weird <laughs> freaking thing is he's just chasing you know yeah yeah i want that i need that <laughs> That's a thing that must happen in my life. All right, Derek, have you thought about doing something stupid like that? Come on. Please tell me you <laughs> um, have. I would say more in my younger days. I um, I worked at a graveyard shift at a grocery store. And, uh, you know, I, I was... I was toying around with stories and such. And I decided to write a, 
a, a story based around uh, you know all the people that I worked with and how they would get killed off one by one. So, but that's about the you know I usually tend to go more serious with my writing than that. Uh, that that was in my earlier days. <laughs> I well, do. I, want, I have pursued other you know genres like you know I have several now stories that are in uh, grim fantasy. But uh, I'd love to do a steampunk fantasy, but a uh, steampunk story, but I just haven't come up with the right one yet. So you may see that someday. Dude, I dare you to take a stab at a lit RPG like Angel did. They're not easy. No. Oy. Oy. It's terrifying. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, as much as I freaking hate it, and I really do because I actually don't want this show to end. That don't happen very often, but <laughs> I really don't want this show to end. But we are within the last little bits of this show. Mm. So, as I like to end them every time, because it's the only way to make sure everybody knows who the hell we talking to. Let's start off with my co-host, Angel Ramon. Where can everybody find you, brother? Oh, and you can find me on Amazon. Just look up Angel Ramon for my zombie books, or you can look up Anxious Maximus for my late RPG historical fiction. I'm on the I'm on my Facebook group, The Nietzsche's of Anxious Maximus, which is my history centric group. You can find me on the Witten on Den, posting fun stuff there every day. And I'm on the Asylum of Fear group, where I, I also post as well. And you can also check me on Patreon, where I do upload my uh, books before anybody else can read it, including you, Jack. Yep. He's one of my patrons, and you can uh, get some exclusive updates before anybody else. And that's Sweet. Cool. Awesome. All righty, Mr. Richard Ryan, freaking Rose, you big foot loving bastard. Where can everybody find you? Well, I am, uh, you see me on my Facebook page, Richard R. Rose author, uh, richardrrose.com on my website, also available on Amazon, Goodreads. Uh, Audible and iTunes. Uh, so, uh, you know, check me out there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I was at Encounter Quest today down in North Carolina, and I'll be in several events coming up. The next one, last, but not, well, no, it's the next one, it's not last, but however, coming. Townsend, Tennessee, for the Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Festival. I will be there with bells on. Awesome. So will I. Oh, the Bear Baron. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The Bear Baron yeah. is invited against my better judgment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to be there with my sexy on. Y'all guarantee that oh, right now. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right. Well, since you are filling in as our once again lady awesomeness co host. Give us a little breakdown. Where can we find Javin's stuff? Where the hell has he got stuff going on? Oh, well, he's pretty much on uh, Amazon. Uh, he's on his fan book uh, Facebook page. Um, I post on it pretty much. I, I, every day? I usually yeah, every do day. every day. I, I haven't been uh, doing that too, too much, but I'm going to get back to it. But, um, yep. And he's on Written on Dead. Um, he posts, he usually tries to post um, there uh, at least a couple times a week. And Amazon, he's all over Amazon. Um, you can catch him there. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, how is his OnlyFans doing? Is, is oh, he getting, getting, getting his sexy on with the OnlyFans? If if he does, <laughs> I think you're you're the only one. You and Douglas might be the only fans that, that uh, get on there, but... Well, shit. Well, at least it gives us a, you know, he gets easy his, avenue, you know. Well, he little scrawny chicken self on there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, scrawny, scrawny chicken self unite. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, <boy>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, coming to the guests, the main people, the ones that really freaking matter at the end of the day. Let's face it. Yep. Ladies first, as always, Kristen Vincent. Where can everybody find you? Uh, so you can find me on Amazon if you type in K Vincent. Um, the book is Within Her Thoughts. You can also find me on Facebook under Kristen Vincent Author. You can also find me on Instagram 
it's author K dot Vincent. Um, and then I also have another uh, page on Facebook that is is author K Vincent. So, well, yep. fuck yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I right, then Derek, my man. Mr. Magazine, dude, 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 dude. <laughs> so I'm Break also down, on, course, baby. I'm also on Amazon, of course. Just you know, my name Derek Barton. Um, I do have my own uh, uh, author website. It's authorderekbarton.blog. If um, for more material and you know updates and uh, other things that I you know I put on that website, I try to. Uh, I've been trying to post once a once a week at least. Um, I post a lot of, of new material that I do. So um, I'm also on uh, Facebook. I'm also on Instagram. So also with the magazine, we do have a, a separate website for that. It's with malicemagazine.com. Mm -hmm. so. so I think we got it all out there. Everybody got covered. Everybody got taken care of. Dungeon yep. Dan, he kind of disappeared on us, but he can be found on OnlyFans, usually in the <laughs> butt plug section. Oh, that's, oh. That, that's that's where you'll find him. He's he's good to go there. Just search him out. You'll find him. No problems. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the Book Asylum, where we talk about pretty much everything. Anything, we don't care. As long as it's literary, and interesting we'll talk about it i am jack childress that is richard ryan rose that is andrew ramon holy shit right. that's pat that's patty that's patty <laughs> awesome. these are our guests i get it Kristen vincent and Derek. Barton, we will Thanks. see you next week talking to somebody. Who knows? Peace out. See you then. Thanks again. Nice see everyone. Bye. Bye. You, you guys rocked. You're awesome.